What up, though? It's your boy, DTM, Deontay, the motivator, man. What's good? Listen, man, I'm still excited. You may know, you may not know, tickets are now on sale. If you need them, I told you, seats are limited, so you want to jump on it really quick. Uh, the date, February 25th, so if you're available that day, if you're not available that day, you might want to make yourself available that day, because this is going to be a powerful yeah, movement, yeah, right? So last week, we were talking about vision, right? We were talking about how leaders see things differently, right? Innovative, you know what I mean? So this week, we're going to kind of keep in on that, but we're going to switch it up, and we're going to talk about uh, leadership. We're going to talk about leading, right? Now, we know that managers and leaders are not the same all leaders must know how to manage but all managers may not know how to lead you understand so with that being said I'm gonna tell you be careful who leads you I'm not gonna say who you follow because we should never really follow you should always um, be a student but not a follower you understand so um, with that being said, why I say be careful is because an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Now I'm going to say it again because I want to make sure you got it, right? I say an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lion led by a sheep. And here's why. Leadership can transform you from a warrior to a coward or vice versa. It can transform you from a coward to a warrior. It just all depends on that leader. You understand? So, like I said, if somebody's leading you, you're going to pick up their trait, right? And if their traits are timid, then suddenly your traits will be timid. It's just like when you see kids in the street, they might be around you um, and they might be like the softest, the most mild-mannered ch child you see. But as soon as they start hanging around them bad kids or them, them, them kids that are a little more challenged or a little more into the street way, then you'll start seeing that child with some of them traits, even though that's not how they may have been raised, right? So that, that's the proof in the pudding right there. So that's why it's important to watch who you learn from, right? So notice how I said learn from and not follow. Because we're going to always be students. We're not going to be followers, right? So um, with that being said, as the leader, leadership demands that you will be misunderstood. Because all people really can understand is what they understood. And it's for you to be a leader, you're going to have to show them something different, which means you will be misunderstood and things would have to be, you know, uh, broken down for, for term's sake, right? So leaders understand that God hid everything that a thing or a person is supposed to be within itself. Let me say it again because I want you to get it. I said leaders understand that God hid everything that a thing or a person is supposed to be within itself. So what that means is, if you take an apple seed, he put the tree inside the seed so that the seed can become as big and strong as it's supposed to be if it does what it's supposed to do, right? So he puts your gift inside you. He puts your talents, he puts your strength inside you so that if you can tap into it and nourish it the way you're supposed to do it, then you will be as strong as you are supposed to be. You will be as talented as you are supposed to be. But if you do not tap into the gift that he gave you, then you'll see yourself going down the wrong, the wrong path, the wrong road. You won't get as much as you are supposed to get out of this world, right? So, what I want to do is, let me give you seven quick lessons that leaders must learn before I let you go, right? So, number one, leaders don't wait. When they feel something, when they act, they act on it right now. Like, when, when a leader has an idea or a vision, they act on it right now. Alright, so that's number one. 
Number two, leaders know that character count. Do not let your past acts, for one, assassinate your character, and do not let others around you assassinate your character off of what happened in the past. It's because the past is the past for a reason. All right? All right. So, number three, leaders have our heads in the cloud, right? But our feet are on the ground. Now, what that means is we see further than we supposed to see, further than normal people might see because our heads are higher up and our minds are clear, right? But at the same time, our feet are on the ground so we can actually, you know, uh, touch bases with those who are around us. So that, you know, so when you see a leader whose head is just in the cloud, but their feet are not on the ground, you'll see that the people who he is leading, he or she is leading, may not never understand or may not like it or may not may may be deterred from even lead you know letting this person lead them you understand so um number four leaders know that shared value make a difference mm, that's a deep one that's a deep one leaders know that shared values makes a difference yeah, let it marinate. All right, so number five, leaders know you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it alone. I've been using this term for a minute, man. Jesus had 12 disciples, so you cannot do it on your own. If it's something that you can do on your own, you're thinking too small. That's what leaders know, right? So that's, that's number five. You can't do it alone, all right? So number six, leaders know that they that are uh, in order to leave a legacy it has to be done with your life that you live right so in order for you to leave a legacy it has to be done with the life that you live right so don't think about the money don't think about what comes that you you should be thought of after you're gone beyond your money aspect beyond monetary you should be thought of from what you've done like like Martin Luther King, speech still reigns strong right now today. When you play it, you think he was in your living room. That's how strong the speech is still alive, right? Even after he's gone, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's number six. And and the last one, number seven, man, leaders know that leadership is everyone's business, right? So it's not like a secret. When you're leading, it's everyone's business. People who are in of leadership status, you know pretty much everything that's going on because they share it with you. It's everybody's business. That's why it's so important to make sure that you lead yourself first, right? So with that being said, man, take them seven. That's how you learn how to become a leader. That's how you understand that when you are leading, if you're doing it correctly, if you got all seven of these principles going with you, and, and notice how I said principles, because principles will never change. Don't lead off feelings, because your feelings will change. But if you lead off principles, you'll be all right. Man. So listen, even when you become a leader, always learn from everyone around you. But make sure you do not become it. It's your boy, DTM Deontay, the motivator. I'm going to get with y'all another day. I'll see you at the conference, man. Peace.